good afternoon uh, myself uh, dr ashutosh shrivastava and uh, working in the geoinformatics department uh, in today's lecture we will discuss about uh, overview of uh, spatial data quality when we talk about quality uh, it refers like a certain characteristics characteristics criteria or standard so if passing this if above this characteristics criteria if any product or things are there we always say it's of wet quality or good quality and if it is below that characteristic or criteria it is there we, we say generally it is not of good quality so in uh, like we uh, take an example here we are uh, we are searching for a mobile or laptop we generally go for the market and search for the mobile and we see that uh, it mobile should have a some 8 gb ram uh, should have a some 128 gb uh, storage capacity camera should be there and uh, how much megapixel it is there so front camera it should be there so we are defining certain criteria and if we are able to find out and also we will uh, see look for the some price so if we are uh, the anything it is we are getting the mobile phone which is uh, coming into this criteria and uh, so we can always say we got uh, some good quality things eh? and uh, if uh, like uh, similarly in the gis uh, we are discussing about our data quality in gis we talk about uh, there are two types of, as in my previous lectures uh, in uh, this uh, module you might have uh, uh, learned about uh, raster data and vector data so in gis basically we are dealing about the raster data and the vector data so we talk about these qualities in vector data also we talk about uh, spatial data quality and the, their type of spatial and the non spatial data so we talk about their quality okay so like take an example if uh, you have to do the some network analysis and for that you need uh, some road uh, data basically uh, the road the infrastructure data so you got you, you get the this data from the suppose two three sources or uh, uh, so how will you justify or will see that uh, which set of data you should use for your particular application which data which source is giving you the best quality data okay so that things we will discuss similarly another example if we take uh, like uh, we have a uh, we, uh, different uh, sensors are there over the satellites they are providing us uh, the different categories of data like some are very high resolution data available some way have a very low resolution not good re uh, means uh, moderate resolution data available so we need to see for a particular application particular uh, specific type of resolution we will be using uh, it is not like uh, every is a kind of data we can use for any application just like for particular application a particular data will be definitely required like uh, uh, we are have to do the urban study definitely we need uh, some high resolution data and uh, uh, maybe the uh, maybe the good quality data what we can say and uh, uh, we have to do the suppose uh, like uh, weather prediction analysis weather analysis which is observing the clouds uh, it may not be the that much uh, basically high resolution data required uh, or the we have to do the forestry analysis so the whatever required for the urban studies it may not be possible for the, uh, may not be required for the other studies so for a specific study a specific kind of data uh, may be required so uh, like quality we define in terms of uh, like uh, person to person or object to object we can say uh, we take an example another example like uh, uh, this uh, table is there so this is very well uh, it's a smooth table and very well it is uh, uh, designed and this is basically for the what purpose this is basically for the study purpose so we i am uh, giving the lecture from this from here and uh, you are you are also having a similar tables in your uh, front of you so this is for the basically study purpose now if uh, suppose four person come and use this table as a dining table so what will happen they will say it is not good for uh, dining basically so for them the quality of this table is not good 
and for me it is a it is a very well it's a very good so it depends the quality depends on the objective also and the basically related to the different different parameters so all these things we will discuss we are going to discuss in today's lecture so uh, these are the basically uh, learning objectives of uh, today's lecture we will discuss about the uh, data quality elements and quality and the fitness for its uh, use basically now uh, at the end of this lecture uh, you should be able to explain the elements of the data quality and what is the importance of its data quality so what is quality quality refers to as good or useful things the term is commonly used to indicate the superiority of a manufactured good or at least to a high degree of craftsmanship or artistry. The meaning of quality depends on context in which it is applied. Just now I have taken an example. The meaning of quality depends on context in which it is applied. That means like I talked about a table. So, if this table is very well uh, uh, designed for the uh, giving the lecture and it is very smooth for the study purpose, but it is not meant for the uh, dining purpose. So, for the persons who, who are coming for a dining, using this table as a dining purpose it may not be good. Uh, for them, the quality of this table is not at all good, but for me, it is a very good. Okay, so the quality depends on the context in which it is applied. Quality of data is uh, uh, more difficult to define. This is an another important thing. Like, uh, unlike manufactured product, data do not have physical characteristics that allow quality to be easily assessed. Means, uh, like I talked about table, I talked about mobile phone. So these are the physical things by by the storage, by seeing and by touching this surface and uh, by knowing about the capacity of the mobile means like RAM or the storage capacity. capacity. So we will be able to know that so which is of good quality or not. But data is a different thing here by seeing or by that it's difficult to recognize that whether it is of good quality or not. So there are certain parameters, certain characteristics, certain modeling or mathematical uh, uh, aspects which we need to consider when we are going for to assess the quality of this uh, data set. So unlike manufactured product, data do not have any physical characteristics that allow its quality to be easily assessed. So quality is thus a function of intensible properties such as accuracy, precision, completeness and the consistency. So we talk about uh, these aspects, accuracy, precision, completeness, uh, whether data is complete or incomplete or over complete and what is the consistency of this data, all these things we generally uh, define, then only we can tell this is of uh, good quality data. And uh, apart, along with this, the def as per the ISO standard, the definition is that the totality of characteristic of a product that bear on its ability to satisfy stated and implied needs. So we have to define the definition of basically these characteristics. We have to assess these characteristics and based on that only uh, we can tell about the quality of the data. So in general, if uh, we talk about quality should be assessed by the fitness uh, by the fitness for use so how much that this data or any data uh, it is basically fit for your intended application in terms of that we define the quality of data so what is fitness for use uh, according to vanard uh, they have he has given the definition and as per that we define this fitness uh, in the three steps the first thing like the does the data set contain the information which is required for your intent and application so first thing that we what we have to see is the data set contain that particular app, uh, information like you need to do the network analysis so you need uh, you need to see that's a use you should have a uh, network analysis you are performing for a particular city 
so the all cities road should be there in that particular data if it is not there or any part is missing that that is not a complete data hmm? similarly you can see that the other data set like raster data set you must see that's a, at what scale you want hmm? what uh, what basically that uh, resolution you want this data for your intended application okay like your urban application if you are doing you need to perform you need to have some high resolution data so similarly for your whatever your application you are going to do you first need to see at uh, uh, what whether the intended application for the information whatever it contains it is intended for your application or it is uh, out of beyond that okay then second things what we are seeing here what are the legal and financial constraint to access or particular use of the data so what are the legal and the financial constraint that is another thing so there may be uh, some data which is restricted which is not open to the all uh, uh, maybe the uh, open citizen or all public or all country people but it is maybe restricted to some specific agencies uh, so such type of data uh, if what if we use then we have to take the permission or for what purpose we are using this data we need to tell the uh, consent agencies hmm. first of all it is getting the data of such data is very very difficult also so what are the legal constraints similarly if you are using the such data hmm, like you are using the shape file of any uh, place or country or uh, state so you must see that uh, it, it should not be like a distorted it should not be like a uh, maybe the some part is missing or some uh, part is um, not available in particular data because if you see uh, you use the such type of data then it will be very difficult then the other person say it claims that it is not uh, my country map or some it is not other part is not uh, there some uh, legal issues can be there okay so we need to very very careful while using such type of data that the the information should be perfect it should not be any missing information should not be there okay and similarly the financial constraint but fine when we talk about the financial constraint it's always related to the money so whether we are able to purchase how much money it is required in that what uh, what are the whether we can buy or not uh, so this is also related to the application of data uh, are the data of, are of sufficient quality for your application now first uh, objective when we seen then we talk about the intended application so the uh, information the road information for a city it should be there okay now the second thing the data are of sufficient quality third thing so sufficient quality in the sense the roads you information you got for your application network analysis but whether the roads are uh, connected where it should be there like a uh, one road is coming there should not be any gap so then only you can perform the network analysis if the roads are not connected at a particular uh, end at the end generally roads are connected at the both the ends if you see in case of only uh, except the case where the road is uh, having a dead end when dead end is there that time it will not be connected otherwise generally roads are connected so roads are connected if the if you are getting the shape file so if the roads are not connected in that uh, the, that is data quality is not good so if you will perform the network analysis uh, on such type of uh, uh, data then what will happen if you have to find that suppose shortest route from what point a to point go to the hospital b uh, okay point a to point b then if the roads are not connected then uh, instead of following the path a you may be following the path b which but the a path whatever the you were following it it would have been the shortest one but because of the connection the road was not connected the you may miss the data and the, you may miss the basically the path and then you will follow the another path okay so we have to see whether the data are of sufficient quality for our application if we are able to follow all these steps that means data is follow uh, that data, data is fit for our intended application now the question is another uh, why we have to do the spatial data quality so uh, it is an important thing for century, uh, centuries cartographers geographers surveyors geodesists have been involved in the collection and the storage uh, analysis and visualization of spatial data set 
they have also been studying spatial data quality. So earlier time only was the like a surveyor they were they used to go and they used to do the survey and uh, similarly cartographer they used to make the maps and the, the uh, uh, maybe the uh, paper map whatever it is there uh, and based on that only that's whatever possible things that they used to do analyze the things and they used to do the spatial data analyze the speech data quality but now since 1980 concerns about spatial data quality have increased as a result of a two development developments one it's the emergence of the geographical information system tools in 1960s and the second from the 1970 onwards a strong increase of available spatial data from the satellite so here i will just uh, tell one thing when uh, when you have uh, maybe the limited information for the, for that, that time it is sufficient like earlier when uh, 1960 we go that time that time how many satellites were there hmm? 1960s 70s very few satellites were available hmm? we were getting the limited image even a aircraft image uh, air, uh, putting the camera on the aircraft we used to have image so uh, that time limited image by seeing from the sky that was a big thing okay we are able to see the our land from the sky okay so that was the itself big thing so in that time uh, that time we will say okay it is a good at least we got the some picture from uh, but what happens when the a number of uh, data uh, the satellites increases we used to get lot of images eh? nowadays lot of satellites are there from different countries so we have a lot of satellite then when we have a number of things then what we will say we will say about discuss about the quality okay it is something like just uh, uh, you have uh, one mobile phone which is very old but that time uh, go to back to the 20 years back if you remember there was uh, not much mobile phone were there huh? even a one small mobile phone when the case came just only for talking purpose huh? that time this was a big thing but now today if we see after 20 uh, years then we are having a lot of application uh, we are doing a lot of application using the mobile itself so we are selecting that which one is the good so when you have a num more data set more uh, data special data set definitely you need to go for the good dual, good we need, we have to go for the good quality we can always assess the means we can always assess the quality of this data set and we can utilize uh, the data whatever it is fit for our intended applications okay and then emergence also 1960 this gis emergence has come so gis we know about the uh, we are doing storing the data we are analyzing data visualization purpose we are using this gis so in that uh, this is a part of that uh, quality uh, special data quality also is a part of gis and we have to study it okay so why special data quality because uh, this is the availability today more availability it is there and exchange is also there La lot of products uh, we are generating and then we are disseminating to the other users okay like today uh, we are providing the images and then other ministries departments they will be using this data set and and then based on that they are taking the decisions they are taking the decisions so it's playing a very important role if we are providing a good data uh, good quality data to them then definitely uh, information to them then this will be used for the basically decision makings okay and then growing group of user when less aware of a special data quality this is another thing so when you push on the uh, put up the inf inf information supposed on the decision maker so maybe they may not be aware about the very well about the special data quality but they are relying on your information so when you are doing uh, analysis and then after that only you are sending then they will totally rely on your information only and uh, so that's a uh, and the people other side if you see the like a uh, lot of people are now this using they are uh, maybe the you will be using the support just on an image they are not much uh, worried uh, working or aware about the basically the special data quality so that's why this has become very important to train them that uh, special data quality is an important uh, parameter or uh, basically the criteria huh, it is an, so we have to assess first the quality then only this pass we should the information to the concern users decision makers or whosoever it is there okay 
then GIS software can process data irrespective of its quality. It's uh, so what happens, whatever the GIS software presently it is available, it is not like that you will put the input, you will do the sum analysis and it will provide you some uh, uh, output. But it is not like they are, you are putting that and they are telling you that so basically it is of good quality data or it may not be the of good quality data, okay. So they, they are just processing the things according to your instructions, according to whatever analysis you are doing. So uh, hardly any tool for is handling the spatial data quality. So that is why it has to be assessed uh, maybe then your uh, separately what we can say apart from this software by seeing by analyzing by visualizing by doing the mathematical things and um, equations using uh, modeling so all these things are there and then distance between those who use the spatial data and those who are the best informed by spatial data quality this is also one of the reason why this import quality uh, assessment is important because the people those who are much aware about the spatial data quality they may not be giving the output to the concerned users but the, those agencies who are working uh, for the users they may not be about uh, aware about the quality so both person has to be bring at the same platform we have to train that quality is also an important parameter and you have to work accordingly and then this gap will be uh, reduced and then finally the output product or the concern when we will put the users to this product it will be more useful hmm? and more precise it will be there and similarly producers and the users perspective if we see uh, these trends have contributed to a reappraisal of the responsibilities of producers and consumer of data quality responsibility for assessing whether a data set meets the need of a particular application has therefore shifted to consumer who is a position to who is in a position to make a, such an assessment this referred to as determining fitness for use so from the data uh, producer uh, there are certain uh, points for the data producer as well as the data users as well so for the data producer, uh, we, he need to see what is the specification of the data set. He has to provide this information also to a concerned user. What is the specification? In which projection system you are giving? What is your resolution? All the relevant information of the particular data set he has to give to the concerned user. They have, they may have to meet the statutory uh, obligations. So if any uh, obligations is there, any constraint is there, he, they have to tell about this data to the concerned users. And is the quality reported? So whatever the data is going to produce to the users, whether the quality in that uh, data is reported, whether it is of uh, uh, useful for the basically concerned user. Uh, maybe the your data suppose whatever you are producing it may be the 80 percent is uh, accurate or 90 uh, percent is accurate. So whether you are telling that percent percentage to the uh, concerned user so that's why you must tell that sir what is your quality uh, uh, of the data okay. Then data user's perspective he needs to he, he has to see uh, needs to know if the data if uh, uh, the data are of sufficient quality for this particular application whatever projection system or whatever he say uh, that's a basically um, uh, resolution data or the scale data whatever he is intent it is intended for their particular application then whether he is getting from the producer or not okay before taking before giving before doing any uh, uh, financial constraint uh, uh, limitation uh, maybe agreement we need to see what he is what he they are going to get what we are get, uh, going to get what they are going to give and they need to be able to interpret the producers quality report in this context so they have to read the quality report whatever provided by the producer and they have to study and based on that they can see whether the data is of uh, good quality or not but the, he he should have a able to the user should have a able to un, uh, should understand whether it is of good quality data or not what are the quality parameters so he should be able to understand based on that only he can tell that the product whatever the producers it is giving the data uh, is giving the data is of good quality or not this may still not give the information uh, whatever they need so we uh, we have to assess the quality ourselves as well 
so in GIS, it is the basically uh, the model uh, what we are doing. It's a real world uh, database is the basically model of real world or computer representation of the real world. So in real world, whatever the problems are there, we are uh, forming these uh, problems. And then basically what we are doing, we are uh, collecting data data collection we are doing based on that to form uh, what are the like uh, we are going for the GPS survey we are getting the data from the satellite imagery photogrammetry and the any other uh, sources like uh, some old maps also can be used so from that uh, uh, we are doing the data collection then this data collection it will go as a uh, maybe raw data as a and then for the as a input so for input like uh, you are using this uh, data set and do you are um, basically what you are doing in the uh, editing you are doing and then creating shape files and that uh, data you are doing then finally all these data will go for the analysis and uh, different models uh, will be put inside and um, model will be used for the analyze purpose so data model means it's like a mathematical equations a modeling will be there so where we will be using uh, the different uh, equations or modeling whatever we are doing uh, analysis or we can say the simply the analysis we are doing using this data and finally visualization purpose uh, we are giving this data uh, visualization we are doing we are representing a we are making a good maps uh, using that and then the information will be sent to the particular department or agencies okay now what will happen if in the concept real when the real world problem we are conceptualizing hmm, that time itself suppose some issue comes then then this next stage data collection so data collection itself uh, maybe the giving the certain error can come like you are using the gps devices it's just an example you are using the gps devices for the data collection hmm? and you went uh, you in the field you have you are going into the field for the data collection now if you are standing at a particular uh, maybe the in open area you may get the good signal and the good coordinates you are going giving uh, getting but when you are standing at a place where nearby buildings are there so signals will be definitely when it is coming to buildings definitely it will be affected huh? so whatever the uh, maybe we are getting the position it may not be possible uh, that it is giving the accurate maybe that the multipath error will be there we have to reduce it that is another thing but what i am telling if we are considering such type of data definitely our accuracy will be uh, reduced so if accuracy is reduced that means we are giving we are entering into we are uh, giving input uh, input some inaccuracy we are uh, entering in this model okay similarly uh, instead of uh, maybe the other data set also will be having a similar type of uh, similar or uh, different type of uh, issues okay so input itself concept itself some error was there maybe something uh, that maybe it should be there concept wise also we, it should the area whatever we have selected it should not be or it the a b type of area selection should be there something like that so a that's a concept wise then data input wise that's a, another thing and then when it goes to the uh, basically like third thing that's a input wise means like editing so if you are editing uh, using the old maps hmm, then old maps what uh, editing means like uh, using the map uh, you are create uh, taking making the shape files kind of things okay so you are making the basically like polygons you are uh, editing okay so uh, background it will be there that image will be there and then based on that you are editing now uh, what the polygons when you are making then what will happen it may be uh, the boundary is must be shared okay it may be ha it should have a common uh, boundary but definitely maybe some because of uh, your editing uh, uh, handling so what will happen some gap occurs but in reality if you go on the ground between two fields is there any gap there is no gap at all okay two fields are there two land parcels are there they are meeting they are not at all gap is there but when you are editing in this definitely uh, you are uh, doing some mistake and then definitely because of that some error is coming okay this is the third thing it is coming input type now we consider like a model hmm? so model also will maybe having a certain errors how if you select a type model may give the less result but b type model may give the different result how just take an example here if you have uh, suppose 10 radius okay 10 radius 
and 10 radius measurements okay you have measured certain thing and 10 radius radius measurements now if i tell you just tell me the area of the circle okay so what will happen what you will do average area of the circle what you will do either you will just uh, take the average of all 10 radius and then take the uh, then pi r square so the average area radius you will put it into a place of r then pi r square you will find out the area you will tell me so this is the average area but the other people what they will do they will find the area of the uh, for each radius like r, for r1 it is a pi r1 square for r2 pi r2 square pi r3 pi r3 square and the similar so on now they what they will do they got the 10 areas and after that 10 areas uh, they have just done the average okay now what will happen whether both the radius are this also average area this also average area whether both the area are same no it may not be because it may uh, big, the differences will be there the modeling process is there okay so when you are using the modeling process uh, in a different modeling process you will use you may get the similar different result as well okay though it may be minor it may be major also so, but the modeling model also plays an important role the modeling because of the modeling process you may get the uh, two different uh, uh, areas so similarly in the gis if you use the different model uh, you may get the different results okay now in at each step we get the uh, uh, we, we have inserted some errors okay now finally the output so error when you are uh, finally when you, your output it is coming you are displaying it and at the time also we may have we may lose some information and we may uh, represent something else so from conceptualization to the output of data everywhere there is a chance of an inputting an error if you are able to handle it then your output will be correct otherwise it will be multiplied and different different uh, labels and your output definitely maybe it's a maybe minor minor you are adding but uh, at the end of that uh, you will be having a some maybe big also or maybe minor also but definitely uh, error will be there in that which you can avoid avoid in the sense by selection of the correct parameter by selection of oh, sorry correct uh, uh, correct uh, basically place where you can collect the GPS data uh, without any error this you can handle it very well you can draw, draw uh, when we talk about the inputting the data editing so you can when you digitize the data then there should not be any gap you should follow all the topological rules so there should not be any uh, maybe having any issues okay so that way you can basically avoid the uh, things by selecting a uh, correct model for their application so this you can do and similarly for the output you can place it at a particular place so they should not be having uh, maybe uh, without any error so you can try and you can just uh, uh, maybe what we can say we can minimize this error okay uh, GIS data is of good use as for us it is of good quality if or error free and data is evaluated based on certain parameter uh, like again I will say it's fitness for use uh, take an example of the basically quality things hmm? so if you see uh, there is a one uh, I was searching like a uh, Volkswagen there are doing some uh, uh, place okay uh, today it is corrected but this but when it was searched uh, that location was showing somewhere here hmm? here if you see the red one but exact location was here somewhere fox where the uh, fox wagon uh, there are okay now this and this almost if you see uh, roughly around 100 meter 150 meter that the difference was uh, was there now when whether it is of good quality whether uh, the point should be there at the particular place or it should be far away from that place hmm? so for certain application this may be useful for certain application in the sense if i am going I just have to go to that particular place okay I will drive my car and uh, even a hundred hundred minutes uh, hundred meters before I will stop I will check it there is no showroom nearby and then I will go forward and then uh, what I will do I will ask maybe I will apply my mind I will see by visualization my use my using my eyes I will see here 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 slowly I will drive the car and at least nearby area I will get this place so for me it is a app is a, it is fine 
okay anyway I, I, it is not good but it is uh, i am uh, reaching at that place but in case of suppose any emergency comes huh? any fire happens any uh, ambulance comes okay whether they will go and they will reach at that particular place 100 meters before or 150 meters before they have to look for where it is this where it is this whether it can it should be no they have to basically it has to be very very precise they need a precise information then only they can reach at that particular place okay this is a on road we can understand very well but when we city where it is a congested it is there small roads are there how they they don't have a chance they don't take a chance suppose they are going in this way and the road is blocked already okay they have to go by the other road so like that uh, uh, the correct map information should be there. Hmm? The quality should be better. But again, uh, as in the beginning I say, that's a quality may be depending on the uh, as per our requirement. So for me, this map may be okay, but for other people, it definitely it is not going to be okay because they need a precise information. Okay. Similarly, uh, uh, the other things if you see, uh, like, uh, mm, uh, when we search for a uh, uh, like uh, any particular location okay uh, so whether that location is a point line or polygon what answer we are getting generally if you see that it will show that the location is a like a point so i i am getting a information like a point that place for me but that particular may be the polygon again this depends on the basically scale size at what scale we, we are seeing so this all information basically we need to consider when we are searching for things we are making the maps what we are basically using in our data set what we are using in uh, data what data set we are uh, using in our applications okay uh, take an another example, suppose we need to uh, uh, measure the uh, area of a parcel, okay, it's around 200 meter, square meter, it is there and you have a, you are, you have been given a two uh, sets basically, one is a, uh, two sources what we can say, uh, that's one is a using the GPS, you, you go onto the ground and then you measure the points and then uh, find out the area, how much it is there, okay, it may be close to the 200 square meter plus minus something will be there and using the satellite imagery. So here we need to consider the different parameters, right? We need to see the scale, we need to see the basically uh, what we can say, whether how much uh, line when you have digitized it, how much, what are the pixels it has been covered, okay? What are the pixel size? So this all the things we need to, we have to see and then accordingly uh, we can define that we, this is the area of the uh, land. And by using the GPS, we need to see how much basically uh, decimal terms we are considering. It is not like uh, generally what is happening, we are taking the data up to the uh, two decimal points, okay. But whether it is correct, GPS devices, if you take the hand handled GPS devices, which are very much accurate, may be giving the up to 10 decimal, 51 decimal uh, places. So it's up to two decimal if you are truncating, that means you are introducing some error inside that also, okay. So there are the uh, quality wise if we see uh, in case of google map in case of pass uh, maybe the area uh, different assessment parameter we need to consider we have to see their characteristics parameters and then only we can say uh, this is of the basically good quality the error chances are there their gps also it will be there by mishandling also it can be there by truncation also it can be there similarly in the satellite imagery also it can be there at what resolution you are using what is your pixel size okay so we need to avoid for to get the good data quality take another example if uh, uh, it's a very uh, a very common thing if i say okay this uh, let us consider the according to the land department records uh, that's the area of land area of a small piece of land the parcel is a uh, suppose 10.044 hectare it is there hmm? so uh, the parcel is sold and then the new owner measures the area by moving around the parcel with a global positioning system device and according to according to which the area is 9.890 hectare uh, which is 0 0.154 hectare less than the according to the land record. Now, one person is having a certain land, the area is around 10.044 uh, hectare. 
the that person sells that land to the other another person and that person says uh, what what he did he before taking he should he should get the even after taking uh, he should get the some confirmation also na so what he did he just took the gps device he told gps device is very accurate so he just took the gps device and uh, then uh, he just measured al uh, moved along the boundary of that particular parcel now he found that the area is around 9.890 hectare which is less than 0.154 now what he should say he went to the again that seller he told that uh, uh, i have paid you as per the price like 1 lakh rupees per hectare i have paid you uh, this much amount and uh, your area is basically uh, less than 0.154 hectare so what i should uh, what you should do you should return to me that's a 15000 some uh, some amount you have to return to me so he told no 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 you are telling uh, not correctly you can see this land record this is the registration from the registration department and uh, this area cannot be less this is at this much area whatever i have sold you but he told that person buyer you are telling wrong because gps device cannot be uh, what we can say uh, correct incorrect okay so gps is giving the precise information now where is the problem if you see think that you will say maybe the land record person may be uh, not uh, telling correctly he may be that because gps cannot be wrong okay but the here the problem is that the, uh, how he has measured the things he whether now he whether the he has moved along the boundary he has told clearly whether the boundary is clear or there is some fuzziness is there maybe there is the place where where, where the boundaries are not clear maybe the place okay so he has it whether this type of situation occurs or second thing is there between the like a bound near the boundary or if you see the agricultural field there is a near uh, side by side that ditch will be there for basically the water or uh, uh, flowing or uh, maybe moving what we can say so there is some side is there okay generally maybe uh, it depends from both the persons field if side by side it is there but uh, if even if you it is not there that maybe person can make in there for giving the watering uh, like that they can make it okay so whether he has whether he has consider only the inner edge of that or whether he has consider inside that ditch also that also he has consider hmm? so that's what the uh, 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 that person says the seller says so vendor then argue, argues that the difference could be further be explained by misinterpretation of parcel boundary explain definition or due to inherent fuzziness of the boundary so because of that the error can be there so your gps is correct and my things are also correct as per the land record but the problem is to or the misinterpretation so these are the issues which we have to, uh, now such person if he goes to the uh, maybe for the uh, higher authorities or administration for the clarification that administration also may not be having a that much uh, idea so what they will tell you what they will find out some uh, maybe the uh, expert gis experts only and that gis experts expert G, gnss expert gps expert they will go to the on the, the ground and they will see the situation and mo, uh, along that and then they will practical situation at, as per that they will tell uh, okay this is the basically actual situation there is no difference or if any difference is there they will let you know okay so that's why they, your role is as a gis expert uh knowing the g special data quality is very very much important so did the buyer move along the inner edge or the center of the ditch that surround the parcel so what this example tell us uh basically firstly that a special data quality is an issue in many decision analysis secondly the example shows the importance of the basically definition of special data quality and thirdly the example uh, identifies a need or information on the special data quality and finally the example shows that the special data quality is not an issue for the scientist only special data are used in the decision making and special data quality has implications for the decision making analysis okay so it's very much useful if you will tell to the administration then only they will they will trust on you only so you will tell that both area is are uh, same whether he has uh, as per the land record and whatever he has made as the gps so where he is measuring it matters a lot now 
there are the uh, basically uh, the uncertainty in this database so there could be these stages of uncertainty three stages of uncertainty it may be due to the conception and uh, concept wise measurement and representation and for the uh, because of the at the analysis part so when we talk about the concepts and there are the two things vagueness and uh, uh, ambiguity so vagueness comes due to the uh, uh, poor definitions where the where of the basically the definitions are not clear like when does the grassland stops and forest begin so clear boundary definition suppose it is not there we are not sure that the boundary is crisp or well defined so that means this vagueness things will come now ambiguity if we see confusion about the representation of the geographic phenomena it is like uh, a building we have to represent it by point or polygon so that again it matters uh, what scale we are seeing or representing but this is sometimes it makes a confusion the people you use the simply whatever scale they are using and they just put the uh, dot only okay we can represent it by hmm, building suppose any uh, if you see the maps this is a police station so a scale it matters uh, where uh, police station cannot be like a point kind of things okay how uh, should geographic feature be represented just now i have given the examples uh, what attribute should be ascribed to a feature so what are the associated attributed it is there so because of that this ambiguity thing can come uh, then measurement and representation wise uh, if you see we talk about the re uh, uh, resolution at what resolution we are uh, using the maps then density of the observations how many data points we are collecting for our uh, basically uh, application purpose then fuzzy natural boundaries uh, with uh, fuzziness we are, we have to consider and then we are seeing the georeferencing at uh, georeferencing which map projections we are using all these things we have to see then digitizing errors will be there uh, when we are digitizing then uh, like uh, as i told you the overlap thing should not be there and uh, the boundary should clearly meet there should not be having any gaps this kind of things we will see and we are having also the al always the instrumental limitations okay so some instruments uh, uh, that's why we need to calibrate it again and again and we need to it's not like uh, the instrument once we have used and uh, uh, we are seeing after uh, one year then same instrument we can take it into the field but we have to calibrate it we have to do the calibration properly and uh, we uh, so that's why it can give you the uh, accurate result it will continue giving okay and uh, these are also having a certain limitations okay uh, like uh, with the gps device is there hmm, is uh, giving you up to 10 decimal places uh, data okay uh, but if you want 15 decimal 20 decimal 100 decimal places may not be possible okay so this is not there but uh, we can consider up to the 10 decimal also it is sufficient uh, data uh, but uh, instrumental uh, that also can give you certain results but uh, still uh, maybe the uh, they are also having a certain limitations uh, analysis wise uh, if you see uh, error and approximation in model uh, numerical error in the computer also it can be there as I uh, discussed and uh, error propagation also uh, when we are propagation means like in initial time itself it will be there modeling error and then we are propagate error will be propagated okay through the modeling process when we talk about the data quality parameters uh, we talk about uh, different uh, what we can say terms uh, on in which we are discussing the data quality like lineage uh, these are the basically a few points we have given uh, the earlier uh, and this these are arises at uh, different different uh, timings like uh, first somebody has given decided that so five points then another next step it was divided as uh, given the seven points then further nine points like that it is it was there so it has evolved uh, in the uh, during the time period okay so first is the lineage then positional accuracy then attribute accuracy logical consistency and then completeness temporal uses and meta quality and the resolution so in on these points basically we are considering the uh, data quality uh, position wise if you see that we are talking about like uh, accuracy bias and the precision 
So what is the bias? It is a basically systematic difference between the observed value and the true value. And precision, the spread of repeated data around their average value. And uh, accuracy is the basically average error, uh, the spread of the data around the true value minus composite of bias and the precision. So precision, uh, uh, we will see with this uh, figure very clearly. Here you can see the four uh, images or pictures are there. Okay. So let us talk about the uh, this point, uh, the red point. Red is the basically the cross section of the, you are seeing in this uh, picture. It is a basically true value. Okay. And red value is the basically mean value of all the data points. Okay. So now if you see the red value is totally coming uh, exactly coming as the on the basically this cross section hmm? where cross here indicates the true value. So cross uh, value it is coming and the dots are basically the the black dots are the basically individual data values are there. So D if you see the D image it is a when uh, exactly there is no difference. Huh? There is no difference it is exactly it is overlapping the uh, true value hmm? the red value so uh, red dot so that is the basically precise that's the basically having a uh, what we can say uh, no bias this is a unbiased okay and if you see the black dots uh, precision is basically how the data is following just now I told you that uh, one uh, previous uh, slide the spread of repeated data around their average value so repeated data how it is following so you will take the observation okay using the GPS device so one point is coming two points is coming three points is coming four points are coming so these number of points will come how one is close to the other one it, it should not be like a one is having a more deviation with the previous one so one is coming closer to this one this two second is coming closer to the third one third is also closer to the third one so it is more precise okay so the, the black dot if you see these are very closely it is following so that means it is a uh, more precise and it is unbiased so true value if you take the mean if you are comparing with this uh, true value there is no difference it is exactly following on the falling on the uh, true value so it is unbiased okay there is no bias true value minus uh, just now uh, the application I told you systematic difference between the observed value and the true value so there is no difference okay and when these both are there we can say it is an accurate it is an accurate measurements okay precise and unbiased now take the another one in the second case the black dots are here and the red dot is uh, the average now if you see the black dots are closely uh, following to each other so they are more precise okay but their average if you see the see the basically where uh, with the red dot if it, this is having a more difference with this cross here so what is happening this is having a more deviation it is having a no bias is there okay it is precise but it is bias it is there okay it is precise okay but bias is there so it is not much accurate it is an inaccurate kind of things will be there then take the another uh, example that is a, a here the points are little bit spread it it is not like a more precise closely coming but it's, it's, still it is a spread it and if you see the red dot the average it is a closely matching with the basically the point where the true value is there so it we will say it is a moderately precise it's not precise it's a moderately precise and slightly biased okay it is a kind of slightly biased little bit bias is there it is not exactly following on falling on the uh, true value and uh, it's a moderately accurate we can say and the last thing we can say that's a uh, c figure if we see the black dots it's a spread here and there okay but their average is exactly following on the true value it is some kind of things one value you take 10 another value you take uh, uh, minus 10 so minus 10 plus 10 it will be 0 so it is looking like uh, there is no bias uh, here uh, no bias but the points are not precise okay so what we will say is this type of things also it is having a unbiased but imprecise it is not precise information and uh, then uh, accurate uh, this is a inaccurate things will be there okay that way we can define a lot of cases we can make it and we can study 
uh, when we talk about the true value it is like a reference data set okay so reference data set is very very much important it is not like a, a one time measurement and we have taken as a reference for the future reference data set all, always has gone through the rigorous procedure then only we define that particular data set as a reference data set so in order to calculate error bias and accuracy we need to define the truth in the context in our, of our data set reference data set uh, the data what we are use having using some abstraction of the real world that have gone through various transformation and processing steps so it has gone through the various transformation and the processing step so, okay uh, positional accuracy closeness of location information to a true value uh, basically and comparison when we do then it should be it should be there with the good quality data set okay so we can have a like a, a points any on we are seeing on the image then we can always compare with the gps data set which we can go onto the ground and take the gps uh, coordinates points and then uh, then only we can compare it okay so the another thing is that the attribute accuracy it is the closeness of attribute values to their true value whatever the associated attributes are there we are talking about that uh, accuracy assessment is done by the polygon overlay we can overlay the poly whatever you have created and the reference value it is there you can uh, over always overlay and then see how much difference it is there and by doing the field survey as well on the independent samples and uh, accuracy of labeling for nominal or categorical data we are uh, defining by type like uh, type of land covers type of roads or kind of things nominal data uh, or categorical data we can define like this and for the accuracy of the numerical data we always talk about the mean bias standard deviation mode precision okay this is all the things we discuss uh, in that then uh, temporal accuracy is very very much uh, also an important so suppose you have to do the like a weather prediction kind of uh, analysis so you need to have a uh, some half an hourly images or one images so data should be there temporarily it should be consistency should be there okay so temporal accuracy of the spatial data refers to difference in the values of object location at the two different timing so how much difference basically it is there so consistency uh, when the you are getting the images then only you can be able to the see the differences so accuracy and precision of the time measurement temporal consistency temporal validity boundaries of the parcel remain fixed over period of time whatever the analysis area or boundaries whatever we are making it should be fixed over a lim uh, time then only we can do the comparison and then only we will be able to know how much changes are occurring okay the completeness is uh, also an important thing sometimes we are buying by uh, we are buying the data sets and uh, if you see the data is incomplete okay so, so that is the uh, another uh, part that we have to see data is incomplete and sometimes data is over complete excess data also can come in both cases we have to avoid the, this type of uh, data set we have to fix the data set and then we have to do our analysis so over uh, less completion uh, it data set then we call it as an error of uh, omission and then uh, excess data it is there then it is a or error of commission so both places that we consider as a uh, error basically okay then logical consistency is the basically degree where we have to do the some lo logical rules kind of things and the relationships uh, like conceptual consistency absence of any uh, contradiction it should not be there like roads are going and buildings are there so your road is overlapping over the buildings and then it is going yeah. road is going and nearby uh, some canal or river is there it is overlapping then it is going oh no it is not like that there should be a proper bridge if you are uh, crossing the basically river hmm? so it should not be overlap over the building also it should not overlap so uh, absence of any contradiction it should not be there then domain we are defining in the domain consistency if you are dividing a class like one two three four five then six should not come okay if you have divided up to five it should be five it should not be the six should not be there format wise if you want to compare or adjust merge the data with the other data sets so both the format should be compatible so then only it can be merged otherwise it may not be there hmm? topology 
topology also an important th things like uh, two polygons are there it should when you are the inside uh, ground if you see there there are the two fields two agricultural fields both are meeting but there is no gap but when you are digitizing it you are creating a gap so this should not be there hmm? this should be there uh, the gap should not occur between the both the parcels or both the land area lineage is a basically history of the data those who are providing that the history how the data is formed from what are the procedure it has been adopted to particular data so it is all about it is necessary to tell that so basically it's a history of the data set what we can say the data sources process steps uh, lineage affect the other aspects of the data okay so uh, data if linear is not given then it is not possible to see the fitness whether it is our uh, for fit for our application or not so we need to consider this uh, point also okay lineage uh, we talk about the okay that's just an example we can take it some uh, certain uh, to show you that's uh, how the basically errors are there uh, vector maps if you uh, just to do the, the you are doing the analysis so sometimes you need to basically uh, do the basically rasterization of uh, or vectorization kind of things you have to uh, do the so vector map is in the form of polyline only but raster in the form of the basically you know that's in grids and pixels so boundary of the polygon will be converted into the zigzag form when you are doing the rasterize so whether it is a it is not a, a, like a smooth boundary it will be in the uh, maybe the zigzag form it will be different okay so this may lead to when you estimate the area then this may lead to the different area length of the geographic phenomenon so it will be uh, errors can occur because of that so if you have digitized land cover classes in polygon area boundaries and well separated but while converting to the raster zigzag boundary will move into the other classes also this is also possible by converting the raster it may possible that it may uh, be belong to the other classes as well so while doing the conversion from vector to raster we must have uh, or you should have defined the cell size at least uh, uh, less than the small size of the smallest feature uh, error associated with the digitizations uh, like uh, one road network it is there it's looking smooth when you are digitizing so you need a number of points number of uh, what we can say vertices so digitize it which may be practically may not be possible to fix that uh, many digitization so because of that okay smoothness will come but actually little bit uh, maybe the points will be seen looking like no not that much uh, smoothness we can expect okay so that error it can be there and similarly when we are overlaying on the two maps then definitely quality of the uh, depending on the whatever the map you have digitized it depending on the that quality it may exactly match or may be showing some uh, errors also okay so finally we summarize all the things and uh, uh, just uh, uh, to uh, about this quality uh, any poor quality raw data leads to the poor quality end product required quality of data depends upon the use of the data set as making studies or making a conception does not need highly accurate data but for navigation purpose uh, highly accurate data may be required so in uh, nutshell if i say summary uh, that data quality is a uh, very very much uh, important though we we are not aware so what we do we are we are generally neglecting this part and we are just doing our gis analysis and producing some results this generally uh, if we are doing that means uh, we are introducing error and we are not aware about that so we must focus uh, on about this uh, data quality issue even a first conception is itself concept wise itself input wise and then data creation itself and then a modeling wise which model we have to use then finally output time so at the every process at every time at uh, every steps i will say then we have to consider this data quality issue if you consider this definitely your error will be less and then when you propagate it uh, a propagation error also will be less but you introduce error at input time itself it will leads to the error a propagation error of error, error will be propagated and at the last it may be possible it's a big error will be there okay so try to minimize try, uh, these errors and take all these points so uh, considering this point definitely your error will be uh, less okay so thank you very much uh, for joining this